Well hello, my name is Andy Tidy and welcome to another edition of Canal Hunter. In today's episode we're going to take a look at the old Stratford Canal. Most of you will know this better as the Buckingham Canal, however the section I want to look at is the one mile between the top of Cosgrove Lock and the A5 which was the old Roman road and that section is known as the Old Stratford Canal. Now you may think that this is a strange place to start my exploration of the lower section of the Buckingham Canal because I'm actually standing by the River Ouse and behind me you can see uh, the Grand Trunk Aqueduct. But the reason I'm starting here is because this was where they planned to start the Buckingham Canal. You see, when the Grand Junction Canal was first built, they didn't have an aqueduct. So instead, they brought the canal down from the Fenny side into the river level and then they climbed back up the other side. And the plan of the Buckingham Canal was to go upriver and they would follow the river and kind of do a canalised river of the, of the Ouse. The boat you can see behind me is the Chamberlain Carrying Company. What a way to photobomb a video, I ask you. But between the approval of the canal in 1793 and its actual construction in 1800, the plan changed. And instead of going upriver from here and building the locks, they decided to take the canal off at the top uh, where Cosgrove Lock now is and to go the, uh, the one and a half miles up the way to the A5. This meant that the Buckingham Canal was built to broad gauge dimensions through as far as the A5 and then for the other six or so miles as it winds its way around to Buckingham it only had to climb up through two locks and they built it to narrow gauge dimensions just like you see at the Aylesbury Arm uh, further, further to the south. And with the embankments completed they built a temporary aqueduct across. That didn't last so they designed and they installed uh, the iron aqueduct, the, uh, the iron trunk aqueduct that you see today and that was built in 1811. Now trade on the Grand Junction Canal got off to a very fast start, it was immediately successful and so was it were its branch lines. Initially its branch line up to Buckingham carried a, a good 20,000 tonnes of goods uh, which, was a, a, which absolutely revolutionised the town of Buckingham and that continued on for 50 years. So the railways took over and the trade dwindled, as is so often the case. By 1880 the trade was down to maybe 3,000 tonnes a year. The trade died down and down and the canal itself died by phases. Firstly the bit above the locks became silted up and unusable. Eventually uh, only a few boats were using the canal and by 1932 the very last uh, cargo was carried on this section. The Buckingham Arm always had a reputation for being somewhat leaky and in the belief that the canal was now no longer feeding in water but actually sucking water out of the main line the, uh, the, the uh, canal bed at bridge one was dammed up and an earth dam was installed on a temporary basis in 1944. Of course that became permanent and uh, until the Buckingham Canal Society was formed uh, in 1992 nothing was done about reopening that section of waterway. Now one day when I come through here and the vegetation is down I'll go in search of the lost uh, locks section. Uh, I know I can find one bit for you and I'll show you that uh, before we leave uh, but for now uh, I'll leave you with a lovely view of the Iron Trunk Aqueduct and we'll go and have a wander up to Cosgrove Lock and take a look at that one mile of canal which is being actively restored by the Buckingham Canal Society. If you'd like to know more about the history and the restoration of this canal arm have a look at the Buckingham Canal Society's website absolutely full of facts, great photos, lots of links and lots of ways that you can get involved to help. So let's go and have a look and see what we can find. So if you follow the line of the old canal up from the ooze next to the Iron Trunk Aqueduct, you'll follow a clear line of old canal track and then you come to this. 
a beautifully restored lock chamber, complete with lock gates, giving you a visual representation of what the link used to look like before the Grand Trunk Aqueduct was built. Before you get too excited about this little artefact, it is in actual fact a Disney replica. These walls on either side are modern reconstructions. The lock gates themselves, they are indeed originals taken from uh, elsewhere on the canal. The crucial thing, however, is the distance between the gates. You'll be aware that a narrowboat is 70 feet long and I've measured this lock gate chamber out and it's 32 feet long. So unless you wanted to take your working narrowboat, hack it in half and seal both ends, there is no way this lock ever, ever carried any traffic. But it does give a lovely representation of what used to be. So this was plan B. The Grand Junction Canal comes through Cosgrove Lock and continues on to the north. And the old Stratford Arm runs along this channel here. And it's this arm that we're going to go and have a look at. This is the remains of bridge number one. This is a ground zero for the Buckingham Canal Society's restoration plans. Uh, this is where the 1940s dam was put across the canal and uh, this is what they're reconstructing. They're putting in a modern heavyweight steel and concrete top and then they'll reconstruct it cosmetically to turn it back to the canal and bridge it used to be. If we turn around, you see that the canal continues in water and that's what we're going to follow, see what we can see. So a few hundred yards up, the canal channel, which is in water, kind of peters out and turns into reeds. That's uh, nothing to particularly worry about. The canal's been profiled out and yeah, the weeds are growing, but the water's at the very lowest level. So once they scrape that out, it's a weekend's work. They can uh, rewater that dead easily. So we've arrived at the site of bridge number two, another flattened structure that needs to be completely rebuilt. But between bridges one and two, the canal bed is all open, ready to go. But we'll press on, uh, this is now into grazing land and the canal bed is much easier to follow. Right now, it's very hard to ever imagine this canal overflowing. But what you're seeing in here is the insides of a culvert. And the culvert would have contained 
cover would contain a paddle gear and that allows water to shoot out through and into the stream and down into the ewes at times of flood. You see these structures all over the canal system. It's easy to mistake them for an abandoned block. They're absolutely not the case. Uh, they are simply a paddle gear to allow water to uh, flow out and relieve any pressure. This canal is built in the typical uh, saucer shaped profile. So you can be quite sure that even when it's in water, you'll always struggle to get near to the banks. Well, this brings us to the very end of the old Stratford Canal. We have come up against the A5 trunk road. This was the road that the old Stratford Canal was built to link into. Uh, this was the site of a major transshipment wharf and goods were moved on and off the canal onto the road. The A5 itself was one of the old Roman roads and by the time the canal reached it, it was uh, one of the turnpikes, two days ride away from London. So, this is journey's end for this canal hunt. It's also really the journey's end for the first phase of the Buckingham Canal restoration. Uh, there's a, a winding hole being built here, ready for the boats to turn. The channel for the all one and a half miles back to Cosgrove uh, is dug out and it's profiled and ready to go. They just need to complete that bridge number one and then do the same on bridge number two and you've got a route through to here. The one thing is, as you might hear from the background noise, this is not going to be the most tranquil of mooring spots. The noise gets louder and louder as you move this last half a mile. The real prize will be going beyond the A5 and moving on all the way up to Buckingham. But that, as they say, is another story. So, that's the end of this edition of Canal Hunter. Hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you soon. So, cheerio, happy hunting. <laughs>